So I've been looking for an old uh, GPO telephone for some time now and uh, I wanted to do a Raspberry Pi hack themed with an old school telephone where you basically dial the numbers and uh, various events happen. Um, and you can see from the, the quick demonstration there, prints out a message and uh, plays some music and zero will shut down the, uh, the Raspberry Pi as well. Uh, it's still in production and obviously check back later to see uh, see how this progresses. Um, whilst I was searching for uh, how to begin with this project, there were lots of videos and uh, lots of tutorials on, on people who've already done this and they've already managed to uh, connect the rotary dial up to um, the Raspberry Pi. Uh, one of the problems was that there was no kind of explanation or tutorial. Um, you know, there's a, a number of different wires, five or six different wires. How does this uh, connect? You know, how, how does this piece of uh, kit work? Also, you know, what make of phone is this? What model of phone is this? How does this work? So I decided to create a tutorial video, which um, you're watching now. And this will give you a quick overview how to hook up uh, an old rotary style telephone to, um, to your Raspberry Pi. Okay, so the first thing you're probably going to know is uh, how does this rotary dial actually work? Obviously, I've taken the lid off the, uh, the phone and uh, stripped out the outer casing and here we are left with the rotary dial. Now, my understanding of this is basically what happens when you dial, let me just put that back in there. When you dial and release it, you are actually um, creating a circuit each time that the phone uh, rotates back. So obviously one would uh, connect a number of times, making the circuit a number of times, a number of times, uh, four, does the same thing. Obviously zero would be the longest and uh, this kind of creates a set of pulses. So you might say, for example, have one or two pulses here, three or four pulses, four or five pulses. By the time you get around to here, you're up to maybe 20 pulses or so. Um, those pulses can be counted and uh, from the counts, we can work out which number, which number you've dialed. So we need to write a program that counts the, uh, the pulses. And these are basically switches which are opening and closing. And uh, obviously with the Raspberry Pi, we can use GPIO pull-ups and pull-downs to make a reading of whether the switch has been opened or closed, record that, add it to uh, a variable, and then uh, we're building up a number of pulses or recording the number of pulses, which we can then convert. So in order to um, hook your Raspberry Pi up to the phone or attach to your phone rotary, dial to your Raspberry Pi, you're going to need to work out what model of phone you've got first. Um, this website, thebritishtelephones.com, is an excellent website and uh, lists most of the phones and you can search for the site for them. You can find out information about how they work, different models, etc. Um, I found out that mine was the um, 746 model and uh, it gives you a nice breakdown about it. You've got various information. Uh, circuit diagram, which we'll come on to in a minute. Uh, traditional colours, that's probably the one that I was given, although uh, in much cleaner condition. Here's a little bit of history about it as well um, and how they were developed and, and so on. Uh, once you're on that, you'll find at the top you can uh, access this circuit diagram um, for, the, for the phone and uh, click on that. And uh, obviously use this. Um, to access the, the various switches. Now, I'm not an electrician and I found this quite confusing, but since I knew what make my uh, my phone was, I knew it was a 746. Uh, I Googled wiring diagram for a 746 phone and uh, I found this. Now, this to me made a lot more sense. The first thing I noticed that the colors matched the colors um, of the phone that I had. Now, obviously, Colours may have changed over time, they may have uh, decayed or faded, um, different colours may have been used, but I've searched for a uh, 746 wiring diagram and uh, this is what we've got. And a bit of interest is this here where it says dial auto number 21 and I can see here there's five wires and they all connect to the various colours of, um, of, of the rotary dial. Once you've found the wiring diagram for your rotary dial, uh, you then need to pick out the various wires um, which are then going to attach to your to your Raspberry Pi. So what we need to do is um, this one here is the main power one, and obviously you can notice there it's got this little uh, kind of two arrows, 
uh, or two triangles joined together, which means it's a, a switch, and uh, this is one of the ones we need to use. Uh, you can then also see that there's one here, and there's also one here as well. Okay, so number two, number four, and number five are needed. So in this example, if you've got a seven, four, six, two, four, and five are the wires that you definitely need to use. And then we can trace back along here and find out that number five uh, is, uh, is, is an orange wire. Uh, there you go, orange. Okay, and number four is the pink wire. And number two is the slate. So I know I need to use orange, slate, and pink. And uh, the other two wires can be attached to a ground pin. Take note of the other ones. One and four are going to be attached to the, the ground pins. Uh, the main wires you're interested in are obviously five and uh, four in this example, because they are the two switches that close, and then also number two. So obviously return back to your, uh, turn back to your rotary dial and locate those three wires. Now that we know uh, which, uh, which wires are the switches, we can obviously wire it up to the, uh, to the Raspberry Pi. So the uh, first step here was to solder on some jumper wires onto each of the wires so that they can uh, be connected to the Raspberry Pi. And then what we want to do is as follows. So uh, the orange wire, which you may remember was the uh, main power wire, uh, this goes into GPIO 23. Uh, the next, uh, next pin is the ground pin, which we'll leave empty, connected to the pink wire. And the pink wire was uh, switch number four. So switch number four is uh, slotted into GPIO 18. Okay, so you've got main switch, the power switch um, is on GPIO 23. And the uh, switch number four is on uh, switch number 18 there. And then obviously what we're going to do is close these circuits. So we take the, uh, the browns, uh, brown wire which is obviously the, the close for the switch and also the slate wire and to just add them to sort of ground pins there. So there's one on here and there's one over here on the ground pin. Uh, that means you will end up with one wire um, free. In this one it's the blue wire. Okay, and the blue wire here was the uh, closing for switch number two. Okay, but obviously everything else is grounded and we're only using two GPIO pins and it seems to work. I have tried various different combinations and um, this this one is stable and works. It may be different on your um, phone but what you want to make sure is that the main power switch is connected and also one of the other switches as well. Uh, in my example um, I found that switch number four works which is the one immediately to the left of the power and then obviously ground those two using the ground pins um, on, the, on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, once you're done, you are all set up and obviously they're connected there and you are ready to write your code, which we'll have a look at now. Now that we've got the Raspberry Pi and the rotary dial hooked up, uh, we can create the Python code for this. So let's have a quick look how this, uh, how this program works. Um, we're using then GPIO pin 18 and 23 to look for a pull-up. Okay, and obviously when the, uh, when the rotary dial goes round, it connects, make us, makes a circuit, and this obviously um, creates a pull up on the GPIO pin. C is the uh, pulse, or count if you like, C for count. And uh, what we're doing is starting off the count at zero, and each time that the um, count, sorry, each time that the pulse is detected, the pull up is detected, we add one to the count. This way we can count the number of pulses. I suppose the next important line is this one here, is the bounce time. Now the bounce time, is the uh, gap between checking and uh, obviously resting before it checks again if there's another pulse. So you may need to adjust this bounce time. Um, I found that seven worked fine when the rotary dial was out of the phone casing. As soon as I placed it back in the phone casing, and obviously there's lots more electromagnetic interference, there's the metal from the bells, there's the metal casing and so on. Uh, I found that I had to up this number but 10 seems to be working, uh, working okay. So the program's running. Uh, each time you dial one of the numbers, it counts up the number of pulses, and then we print out the number C, and C is the, uh, the number of pulses. And uh, I wrote down what the pulses were, and uh, I found that when I dialed number one, it was three, 
and when I dialed number two, it was five, and, and so on and so on. Obviously, 10 is not 10, it's the number zero, uh, but it's easy to refer it to 10 uh, to look for the pattern. Uh, what I found was that the um, pattern here was 2n plus 1, where obviously n is the number I'm dialing. So 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9, so I get 9 pulses. Uh, 8 times 8 is 16, and to add 1 to it is 17. So now I've got a way from the pulses to convert it back into the numbers. And obviously what I need to do is take 1 off. So C minus 1, and then divide that by 2, will give me the number that has been dialed. And if we return back to the program, you can see here... Uh, that once it has um, printed out the value of C, I then convert it into the number. So obviously I want an integer, I want a whole number. Here's the C, so take the pulse count, let's say three, minus one from it gives you two, two divided by two is one. So a pulse of three means I've dialed number one. If I go back here, I can check. Let's try number 15. Uh, so 15 minus one is 14, 14 divided by two is seven. So that means I dialed number seven. And if we check back again, number seven is uh, 15 or a pulse of 15 or 15 pulses is seven. So now I've got a working code uh, that converts each of the pulses into a number uh, and that represents the number I dialed. So that's the final code there. Uh, it's available on GitHub if you want to download it, have a play around with it. Remember, if you start getting uh, any odd numbers um, or, or the readings are incorrect, then obviously increase the bounce time, reduce the bounce time. You may find that your pattern is slightly different. Um, this is obviously a 746. This is the solution working for me. But as I said at the beginning of the video, uh, the reason for doing this is that when I was looking for a tutorial solution, there wasn't anything. Thanks for watching uh, the video. I hope it was useful and uh, saved you a lot of time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, let's just shut this down.